I, we start to get broken down, be formed into the people he wants us to be, and then to be fitted together piece by piece. A lot of us have plans for our life, how we're going to go. And what God wants to do is give you a better plan, guided by his Holy Spirit. It begins with a change of heart. The Lord wants us to be more and more flexible, to have hearts renewed. But he's going to do something new in the structure of the church. We went to a parish that was dying, was on his last breath. The Lord God, after one year, has given us the opportunity to see new life coming forth. I believe that we have not seen the church that Jesus Christ wants us to be. in the house of prayer to be a people of hope. He gave us that name. About a year ago, we asked the Archbishop of Newark if we could come to Newark, to the city of Newark, to see if what had been working well in the suburbs, evangelization, prayer, could work in the city. And it has worked out. When we came to the city, the bishop was very strong in saying that he wanted us to come not to set up a house of prayer, but to come as a community to minister in the parish, to minister as a parish team. So the basic concept that we follow is Jesus as the center of everything, the Holy Spirit guiding us, that we're called and formed into a Christian community, and we're available for service. And the service comes out of the community. Here in the city, we're doing things about renewing housing, and we're taking care of people who are poor and destitute. But what we want to tell them more than anything else is that there's a message, that there's good news, that God loves them. Because we just see a people who are sometimes overwhelmed with their problems. And we feel that if we don't attack the problem directly, but bring them to the Lord, bring the person to the Lord, that he's the answer. He's the one who solves the problem. What we try to do is to bring the people into a, a deeper appreciation of who Jesus is. After I came to know Jesus myself, I was so happy with what I had come to know that I shared it with my family. And they were a little skeptical about it at first. They had to come and see themselves. And I prayed very hard for my family that they would come to know that there's, there is so much hope in this world amongst every, all the problems that we have in this city. Since my children have been coming here to the Bible school, they enjoy it. And it's not just um, arts and craft or those kind of things that they do, but coming to know Jesus. One, one beautiful thing that I was taught here, that these children that I have are Jesus' children. You know, it makes you want to be more patient with them and really care for their needs, not just the, the needs that they have to have, like feeding them, but really being with them and being concerned about their feelings, too. California. We didn't have what was promised for us to 
make money. We got to the point where we can't afford our rent anymore. We had to start living in uh, the back of our car, station wagon. And we had to um, cook out most of the time in the park. All I can say is God has really been extremely good to us. He really had touched all our lives since we came here. Um, to me, it's so very humbling knowing that God loves us. Now that I'm working at the, the school, my children work along with me. And to me, there's nothing more satisfying in a father's lives than seeing their, his own children with him, you know, and uh, for them to be helping me a lot in my work. Even the children themselves have shown uh, God's love. They try to um, tell me that a Christian way of living should be very loving and friendly and honest. And they do this and they share this with their friends. If you keep my command, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love as I also have kept my father commands and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be made full. And so we believe that this is the thrust that the church is following at the present time. That we have to be evangelized ourselves and then go and share the good news, not in an arrogant, uh, we got the whole answer type thing, but a servant type thing like Jesus would do. Because evangelism is of the very heart of the gospel. We're trying to live as a renewal community, be renewed in the spirit of Jesus as the center of everything we do, the Holy Spirit as our guide, and then that this background, this foundation of Jesus and Holy Spirit leads us into the formation of Christian communities that people want to gather together under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And then the key is service. And the first service that we're called to is evangelization. When Pope John, the year before the council, prayed for a new Pentecost, we said that prayer every day. Now we're living it. We just see that there's a new Pentecost in the church, that the Spirit of God is blowing upon the church in new, fantastically wonderful ways. The biggest fruit that we see is not speaking in tongues or prophecy, though that's part of it, but we see changed lives. We see people, wherever they were, when they dare to empty themselves and turn to the Lord, repent and accept Jesus Christ as Lord, open themselves to the fullness of His Spirit, that a new potential comes out. Wherever we come from, if we surrender ourselves to the Lord in a new way, a whole new fantastic beginning starts. And that's what we see happening now in the church. And I believe that this is the Pentecost that Pope John prayed for and we're realizing today. Our monastery started in uh, 1880 with two American sisters and two French sisters came over from a monastery, Ulan, in France. Uh, it was just the four of them started. I just marvel at <laughs> what four people did. Usually the settings such as ours uh, in a city area with so much noise and everything else is not the setting that people usually look for for the cloistered form of life. It wasn't like that when we moved here. It was fairly far out in the city, but the city has grown up around us and uh, the area is quite bad now as far as crime and difficulties go. We've had our own people attacked on the doorstep and things of that sort.
our whole community has been baptized in the Spirit. We came in in two groups, 19 at one time, and then about six weeks later, the rest of the community experienced this release of the Spirit, and it is transforming our community. I think particularly in the areas of prayer and uh, personal relationships, Jesus is the in heaven and the greatest. Oh, he means everything in the world. <laughs> I don't know what he made me any better. I think he did he made me more prayerful. And, yeah, I love him. And surely I want to see Jesus and meet him and love him more and more every day in my life. Oh, I'd say he would do was sad life anybody that doesn't know Jesus is misses a lot in this world yes it's wonderful take care of everybody and everything yes. told us, come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will refresh you. I think what God is telling us now in the church is that we have good news and we have to go and tell it. The Holy Father said that the primary witness that the church needs now is a group of people who believe and then go forth and tell it. It's a Saturday afternoon coming home from work and I walked in and walked into the living room and Jenny was laying on a couch she saw me and she said oh hi Bob she said you know you look tired would you like something to eat matter of fact she should have been so mad the door should have been locked and if, if she was gonna say I got had it I want a divorce I was all set to say fine you know what's the big deal and like I was just t completely taken aback and I said yeah okay and she went in she made me a sandwich she said why don't you go take a shower and lay down and you know relax and something started working in me right there. And I think what it was, and this is in retrospect, it was the love of God coming through because of Jenny's love for me. The net result of this was the next week, I walked into a church called the Lady of Victory down in the Wall Street area and just said, God, you know, I can't do it. I don't understand it, but you can, I know that. And I just ask you to take over my life and, and do whatever you have to do. Like, I don't have the wisdom you do. And that was my experience with the Lord. That's when Jesus became my personal Lord and Savior. And I didn't have any of the buzzwords. I didn't know how to say it. For God knows what's in the hearts, and He's the one that changes hearts. But we prepare the way. And that hey. is the loving action of couples that prepares that way. Hey, you got to get him off the field. Well, let him go chase the cat, but you got to get off the field. Go, go get go get He didn't want to chase the cat. Okay, guys, look at that. All right, Billy's up. Josh is Jordan, home. Josh is, Josh is, go home. I got it. Where are you out? Hey, 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 we're up. I go behind you and get out. Josh, Josh, Josh. Oh, God. Okay, that's a hold up. That's a hold up. He's the house. That's no fair. He's the house. That's his house. All right, we'll do it over. All right, we'll do it over. Back up there. We'll do it over one more time. No. I didn't hit nothing. <laughs> oh. 
Jesus into his life, I hadn't. At the time that Bob did, we had five small boys, and our youngest baby, when he was born, he had a, a birth defect, and it was corrected or healed through surgery, but he still took a great deal of my time, and I had to feed him every two hours, and it just seemed at that time in my life, I was really overwhelmed with the children and with the work and just keeping up with meals and the diapers and everything. But I saw something happen to Bob. I saw that he was into something new, and it seemed like he was becoming a religious fanatic. <laughs> and all I could say was, rejoice, baloney. <laughs> and what happened was, all of a sudden, I saw that Bob was willing to help me. He started to help me a great deal. And he stopped talking about Jesus, but his actions really showed me that he wanted to help me and that he understood what I was what was happening to me. And he really, he touched my heart. And I saw that whatever was happening to him was a good thing. I got some gripes. Who's, who's pulling garbage these days? Me. Jimmy. Or garbage pails. Or one inside the other one. Like the, no I don't want to talk. I try to get them out, but I can't. Well, what you have to help you? Somebody else. Well, like, I me and Jimmy try. Would you have them out here? No. I'll okay, you're going to help? Okay. Okay. You have to suck the peel, and you can't get a woman to get him out, okay? So it's a mess up here. No, no. No, no. Don't do that. I'm a Catholic Christian, and I believe that the Catholic Church has the fullness of God's revelation. And I think that we're learning what it really means. My idea was always that I had to find out what to do, and then by force of willpower, I have to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to get up to go to Mass every day. I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to do this willpower Christianity. I'll do it. I'll do it my way. I'll do it myself. God help me, but I'll do it myself. Now what I see happening is something else. We're understanding what it means that God is Savior in the person of His Son, Jesus Christ. I'm seeing that we have to say, Lord, we can't do it. You have to do it. It's too big for us. What I see many times is that life is like this. Many times burdens and difficulties overwhelm us and we're underneath like this and when they just we just seem what are we going to do and when we accept Jesus as Lord to yield and to live this way and to believe that Jesus Christ and myself form an overwhelming majority that any problems then this difficulty or anything else we take it and we turn it over and then we're on top of the situation and that's the way the Lord wants us to live not burdened down by difficulties, problems. He wants, and that's what it means to be transferred, to be turned over, and God wants us to be on top with Him. But a lot of times, the enemy of God's work and God's will in our lives is my own independence and my rebellion and my doing it my own way, which is called sin. This passage says it very clearly. If you want to be a follower of mine, what do you have to do? Renounce yourself. You've got to give up your way of doing it. You know the song Frank Sinatra made popular, I'll do it my way. Great song, bad theology. I'll do it his way. 
God's way. I'll do it your way. Lord, let me do it your way. Change me. Let me desire to do it your way. He must renounce himself. And that count, that's everything. A lot of times people are afraid of renunciation. But what God wants us to do is to so die to ourselves in our way that he can show us his way, a much better way. I've come to give you life in an abundant way, Jesus tells us. I want you to live. A lot of times when people hear this passage about renunciation, they say, I'm not going to do it. I have to give up everything. I have to give up my home at the shore. You want me to go down and live in Newark with you? I don't, honest. <laughs> honest. But what the Lord wants us to do is to renounce our way so he could take us his way. Many times people talk about the Holy Spirit and receiving the Holy Spirit and it seems as if you don't have to do anything. I like that word from the psalm. Let them know that you have done it, that it was you, Yahweh, who did it. What I see is we have to understand that God is God and we're not and that he does it. But what he needs is our yes. He needs our surrender. He needs our cooperation. He needs our going along with his divine plan, and that's our cooperation. That God does it all. He has the whole plan, he has the means to do it, but he needs our yes. The words we started with, very simply, help me Yahweh my God. That's the key. That we have to call out to God as Savior and Lord and ask him to be our personal Savior and Lord. And when we declare ourselves publicly before men that this night we receive him as Savior and Lord, Jesus Christ is before the Father saying, Mary and Joe, Tom and Betty are in me because they proclaim me as we proclaim Jesus before men, he proclaims us before the Father. But it's a humbling thing. You know, we want to say, I'll do it myself. And what the Lord wants to show us and wants to demonstrate to us is we can't do it ourselves. And we understand that I, as Paul said, I live now, not I, but Christ lives in me. For me to live as Christ, Paul was able to say. And what has happened many times is for many people and for our church that Christianity becomes a code of ethics, a moral norm. I got to do this and I can't do this instead of a living personal relationship with God. God is restoring us and God is renewing us. The way he's doing it is by inviting people one by one to come to radical renewal. The reason he does it is because he loves us. As a sinner, he has forgiven us. He truly has forgiven us of our sins. And now in your heart of hearts to accept forgiveness, I choose to live in love, to live in faith, to live in the certitude that you really do love me, Lord. And now, just as Jesus has forgiven us, he asks us to set free those whom we are still clinging to in unforgiveness. I forgive, Lord, my family, my parents, my friends, Lord, whom I always counted on, but they never lived up to my expectations either. Lord, I forgive the people I work with, the people I live with, Lord, I set free now all those people who have ever hurt me, especially those people who made me feel unworthy today. I think it's important at this time to say just loud enough for yourself to hear, Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, I invite you into my heart to be my Lord and my Savior. Let's all do that now. Jesus, I ask you to come in. Lord, I ask you to take over my life. 
I ask you to be my Lord and my Savior. Lord, take over my whole life right now. I hand over the keys to my life to you. Lord, I don't want to be in charge of my life anymore. I want you to be in charge, Jesus. Lord, take over my whole life. Take over everything within me, Lord, my emotions now. I ask you to take my feelings, Lord. They belong to you. My sexual life, my emotions, Lord, the way I think, my thoughts. Everything is yours, Lord, and I give it back to you right now. Glory to you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, you are Lord. Glory. The biggest thing is that the Lord wants to form us first, and then from the overflow of that, we want to share with everybody who wishes to come with us. The key concept, I guess, is that we have to be evangelized ourselves. We have to experience. We have to be very much part of the good news ourselves. It has to become very much part of our being. And then we seek to go into tell. God is leading us. And as a people, we just want to say we're going to follow.